Hello and welcome to the Adventure Effect Live with Tom and Curtis. We are discussing the confluence of adventure, spirituality and uh, business and the global transformation that's possible at the convergence of, uh, of these three areas of life. Uh, today we're really excited to have uh, Kate Strong join us. Kate has a double masters in mechanical engineering. She's a Ironman uh, triathlete um, and she also works with uh, businesses and leaders to help them find their voice within adventure. Um, in January, uh, so just over a, a month's time from now, she is embarking to become the first woman to cycle continuously for 24 hours and breaking three Guinness World Records in the meantime. And as if that wasn't enough, she's then going on in 2022 to to compete in the race across America, a 3,000 mile cycle race, followed immediately by a swim across the English Channel, which is 21 miles, and then off to climb Everest, uh, all in the space of 12 months, because why not? So Kate, uh, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. It's <laughs> good to have you. Yeah, when you mention it in, a, in one sentence, I sometimes forget that I'm the one who actually created that and is going to go and do it. So it does sound a little wild. It sounds a little wild even to us, yes. Um, so normally we begin this, this show by asking our guests what adventure means to them. But just as we were talking before going live, we, we realized that you've kind of already had quite a day. And... Um, you've been for a four and a half hour cycle ride, you've had your ice bath and you are looking radiant, you're glowing. Um, and you mentioned that you've had been through quite an emotional process uh, today. Um, so we thought it would be um, fun to start instead of asking you what adventure means to you, but just tell us about your process and uh, the link between adventure and, and emotional release. Yeah, that's great. And um, thanks so much for inviting me here and to share a little bit about my philosophy as well. And uh, yeah, today was quite an interesting day because uh, in January last year, if you'd have asked me, a four and a half hour ride would be my pinnacle. But nowadays it seems to be my warm up because I do multiple 12 hour days regularly to, to train for my world record. So today I thought it would just be banking the hours and sitting on the bike, getting the physical legs moving. But um, what actually opened up was an, an emotional wave, pretty much. I found myself reminiscing a lot in why I got into my sport, how sport has actually allowed me space to, to shine, to, to be myself, to find myself, to give myself permission as well. And today there was a lot of tears because the reason I suppose I started sports, I mean, I've always been sporty. I've always done activities but when I committed to being who who you see today I was still in quite a, a toxic relationship I I was with a guy for nine years and incrementally and over time my voice was heard less and less to the point where even my nose were ignored in, in many situations so uh, it was quite an abusive relationship and I was engaged to him we were going to get married and the only outlet I found was running. I, I, was, I couldn't run a mile, but that half an hour when I'd leave the house, put my trainers on was the only half an hour he couldn't control me. Uh, my, house, um, my phone was also being monitored. So even if I left the house outside of permission, he would call me to find out what I was doing and where I was going. So that, that window of running was the space for me to say, I've committed to a future that I don't want to be with this guy. I'm pretty much giving him my body whenever he wants it, though I, I don't agree or want to choose that. But that half hour with me on my trainers, that's when I can be me. That's when I can have that glimmer of hope that maybe, maybe I haven't lost totally myself. Maybe the future could be a little different. And so today on my my bike was remembering why I'm doing this. This isn't about the medals. This isn't about the records. This is about giving ourselves permission to, to explore, to, 
to go on those inner journeys, to embrace our demons sometimes, and also the shadows that, you know, it, it, it took a while for me to acknowledge that shadow of my life because I saw it as a failing in myself. You know, you, you can't be raped by your fiance. He loves you. It's a failing in me. Maybe I'm the, the broken one here. So it, it's taken a long time to, to acknowledge that sometimes the shadows aren't pretty and, and, and maybe that's why I am who I am today, that I'm striving for the mountains, but I know I need to let go of a lot of baggage along that way as well. So it's time for me to also, today was dealing with my shadows of that mountain rather than the sunshine basking at the top. But I feel it's important work to always look behind us to work with what we're carrying with us and choose what's serving us and leave what isn't with compassion for ourselves as well as those people who are also involved. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's, um, I really appreciate your vulnerability and, um, and, and your presence in, in sharing that with us. Um, what came to me as you were sharing that story is one of the one of the kind of central features of adventure for us is that shedding of the layers who we are in the office in the relationship in the family doesn't matter and we just all of that comes off the job the education you know we're stripped back to our kind of our bare essence and it gives us room to be to exist I'm, I'm curious about the evolution from, from that person to this person. Because yeah. You said you couldn't, run a, you couldn't run a mile, right? And I think, you know, a lot of people probably can relate to that, maybe not necessarily the abusive relationship, but this, the, the feeling of, um, I don't know, helplessness or, or that, you know, that things are a lost cause. Um, but here you are as, as evidence that, you can turn it around. So I'd love to hear more about how that journey went for you. Yeah. It's always easy, you know, I'm, I'm, it's a cliche, which I suppose why it works is, it's easy to look back and join the dots, but at the beginning, there's no way I could have seen, foretold what was coming up. But for me, uh, stepping away from abuse and stepping into my power is synonymous. They're, they're so intertwined, I can't tell one from the other. The first step for me, if it's to strive away, to strive towards a goal or run away from a problem, is about just giving ourselves permission to believe something else is possible. You know, when I when I started running, I, I had asthma. I, I, I couldn't run a mile. I was wheezing. My legs were burning. The usual feeling of bile burning my throat when I was going to vomit because I was pushing too hard. But remembering I don't need to run a marathon in a day. It takes time to build a house with the foundations, with each brick, the same for us. We might have a goal or an ideal of what our, what our perfect Kate would look like or our perfect day, but it took months and years to build who I am today. So it'll take months and years to build who I will be in the future. And uh, I, I, you know, I love your trilogy of what you look at and the intersection with adventure and spirituality. And I think we always need to embrace that in our lives. And I make sure, as I just shared, I look at my physical strength, but I'm also working on my emotional, physical, um, emotional, spiritual, and also uh, making sure mentally I'm as strong as that as well. So some days it wasn't running. It was looking in the mirror and liking myself. Can I smile rather than picking the faults and the wrinkles? How about picking some attributes? Because mm -hmm. those gave us uh, the confidence as well. Yeah, you, you touched on something there about running from and running to, which I think is a, there's a, a really powerful distinction there. Yeah. Because if we're running, if we're running from something, like wherever we are and wherever we're going, we're either running from it or we're running to there. And if you're, if you're running from it, it's still controlling you. But if you're running to the place that you're going, then, then that's forward motion, that's um, expansion, that's 
mental, physical, spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. And it's still controlling us as well. Because I think the key is to be in the moment. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, as you said, I, I've got goals in the future in a month's time, but I need to honor today. I'm not, I'm not doing what I'm gonna be doing in the future. You're not on a, on a wall in 12 hours time rock climbing. At this moment in this time, we are who we are. And it doesn't matter about the past nor the future. It's about us communicating effectively today or committing to that cycle or committing to that run. And some days it may be a mile, some days it may be 10. But at the end of the day, we can only do our best in that moment in the present. And that's what we need to focus on. And that's a really powerful reminder as well, is that we can be controlled by the future as well as the past. And that sometimes moving away from the past, like that half an hour of escape that you gave yourself, that moved the stuck energy and you were literally running away from your house um, and running into your future. And you just kept running into your future and away from your past until mm. now it seems like you're really running in the present moment more often than not. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's, it's not a destination. It's like I, the analogy I use is we go, we go to the gym, we get our ideal physique, we, we grow our muscles. We don't then give up for the rest of our lives because we've achieved it. We, we need to work on this every single day and it's more like flying a plane. So I've been told we, you're never on track, but you, you're always heading towards the destination. You'll get there wherever they may be, but we just need to focus on the balance between the two. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that analogy of the plane is, you know, or you could use a sailing boat as well. It's like there are so many forces that are pushing us, you know, trying to, to knock us off, off balance. And it's just a constant re refining of the, of the direction that, that we're traveling in. And that can only be done here and it can only be done now. Yeah, very true. And as you said, I know you're a very big sailor, so we don't know what's coming up. The winds may change, the currents may be in a different for different swirl pattern. Please excuse my ignorance in <laughs> technical language. Uh, and we may not have the energy to be able to, to uh, you know, move the sail either way. So it's yeah. about putting it all together when we need it. Yeah, exactly. So you've gone from, from as we've said, like running for half an hour to get away from from the situation to, to now doing these incredible feats, you know, like you said, four and a half hours on the bike is, is a warm up now for you. What do you, what do you get from these extreme, you know, it, these endurance events? So I was just, I was looking through your, the, the race across America and it's 3000 miles across 12 states with 190,000 feet of climbing, which if I do the maths quickly, that's like more than six Everests of climbing on your bike. I mean, it seems like madness. Yeah. Why? Maybe because it is. I think <laughs> magic only happens when we don't do something extraordinary or different and I, I feel alive when I feel afraid. I feel alive when I'm at the, the brink of knowing if I can do it or not. Otherwise, you know, in, in recent times, I've been in lockdown for pretty much the entirety of this year. And it was too easy to, to control the, you know, the toilet seats up or the, the, the work surfaces aren't clean. And I went, my life is bigger than this. Life isn't meant to obsess over the detail. It doesn't matter if the fork is in within spoons and, you know, think big, Kate. Do something that makes you challenge your ideals. Start, you know, start living with your mind. Start believing other things are possible. And I'm choosing physical, physical activities to push me mentally to believe that we can elevate above certain things. And not once since I've set these challenges have I worried that the forks are with the knives. Mm. Because I'm here to make a difference. I'm here to, to live my life, to actually experience it, to feel it. I don't want to know everything was perfect and I can put myself in a little photo book and it, it's stored away. I want to leave here bruised and battered with my wrinkles, with my stories, with maybe a missing finger because of frostbite. But isn't that a great story? 
Isn't that what we all strive for? Yeah, and I could feel myself as you were talking. I just like, I took it, just naturally took a big deep breath in and just like, was like, and to hear you speak about that, about, about you come alive when you experience fear, when you don't know if you can make it, like that is a mindset that very few people understand. And that's where I thrive as well. And um, I have found it very challenging describing that to people in a way that is easily comprehensible and socially acceptable. Um, how, how is it for you to live within that mindset in a world that is obsessed with safety? Yeah, it's tough in, in short. And it, it's sad also because ironically, we see a lot of posts on social around, you know, the circle of comfort zone and greatness over here, but we mm -hmm. post about it, but we don't experience it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What I found recently is there is, I, I, I find multiple camps of people, they're either in awe or, or fearful for what I'm doing, but they could never imagine themselves doing it. Slightly judge, judging me, saying that I shouldn't do this, mm -hmm. or, or massively empowered and, and getting the message. Mm -hmm. So my, ch my, my, my challenge at the moment is to feed the positivity and make sure that I hold the space for people to learn whatever they need to learn. I'm not here to judge anyone's reactions to what I do or don't do. I'm here to just create that void to say, this is what most people do. This is what I'm doing. What are you going to do to fill the middle? Mm. So however they choose to fill that with, with you know, making making comments around negatively why I'm doing what I'm doing or otherwise it's all perfect and great we're all here to learn a lesson so my I see what their comments are or I see what I'm trying to do is take it as a as a way of elevating myself above emotional reaction mm -hmm. so I can respond and transforming the process as well as holding the space for others to do that too what happens if you look at the people who are commenting negatively or judging as people who are, every time someone sends that kind of a comment, they're sending the message like, fuck off, Kate, I have my own thing to worry about and I'm not doing it, now I feel compelled. And their judgment on you is their way of, of turning the volume down on that desire that they've been, but it's making it harder for them to do that and if they keep following you and keep judging you they're gonna they're gonna be sucked into their own greatness what if you look at it like that yeah yeah it's a great way to look at it and we can only see in others what's in ourselves yeah. so if i'm seeing those negative comments then i must in some essence believe them as well so it's also a, a little flag for me to do some inner work as well mm. but yeah i i do my best to express compassion to everyone and there are some people out there i think are crazy and don't agree with their principles. So it, it's yeah. it's also a way of making sure that I I learn from others and making sure that I don't do that to other people as well, even if I agree with what they're doing or not. One, one thing that I noticed when I did my um, climbing record, I gave up drinking for, for two years. And what I noticed was I was in the UK at the time in London Mm. and people couldn't cope and what what became really apparent to me is that it me not drinking going to pubs with them and not but not drinking with them mm. brought up their insecurity about the fact that they couldn't be in that situation and not have a drink mm. and and it took me a while to kind of to realize that that's what was going on but their insistence that I have just one shot, or go on, just have one, just have one, just have one. It was to make them feel better about not being able to do the thing that I was doing. I, I, I wonder if you get a sense of, of that as well. Yeah, I'm very mindful. I can't read people's minds, though I would love to. So I, I do my best to minimize my storytelling of people's motives, and I, I ask them moreover. 
but yeah, there are one or two people I can think of immediately that that yes, are, are, are using me as a highlighter of what their insecurities are. So it's easier to deal with pushing me away than actually dealing with what, what they should be processing themselves. So yeah, it's, there's only so much I can do for other people. There's only so, because at the end of the day, we're all on our own journey as well. So again, it's that I'm here for you, but you have to open the door. If you are gonna keep judging me or, or doing that, just one more, just do this, trying to undermine my commitment or my integrity to my, my journey, then we will just spend less time together. That's the short of it. So. I'm also drawn just as, as we unpack this, I'm drawn to my own personal journey in, with the work of Joe Dispenza, because I discovered Joe Dispenza and I read his first, well, read one of his books, uh, for anyone, are you familiar with Joe Dispenza? Okay. Yeah. And for anyone watching who, who is not familiar, Joe Dispenza is a meditation teacher and um, um, I mean, he's more than a meditation teacher. He, he teaches a way of creating the future that you desire. And when I first read the book, I wasn't ready. I was in a place of deep depression. I was, you know, I, I was not um, receptive and I wrote it off as hooey, right? I was like, this is nonsense. But if I hadn't have had that experience and I hadn't have gone through that, then when I came back to Joe Dispenza again, a few years later, I wouldn't have been, you know, the road wouldn't have been paved for me to go on my own healing journey of which reading his book, Becoming Supernatural was a very big part. And so that, that phase that, we have all been through of looking up at people who are doing amazing things and judging them is almost a necessary part of, of getting through our own healing process. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And it wasn't Joe Dispenza, but I had a similar relationship with the book that I, I tried to read it three times and it, I kept falling asleep within it. So it was just boring to me. Mm. Yet I, I persisted and say five years later, I suddenly it clicked and I went, that is the essence of life. This is the most powerful book I've read. And it, it took me five years to be able to read it in full. So yeah, when, the, when we, the power of now. The power of now, mm. Eckhart Tolle. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think we've yeah. all read that one at some point or another. <laughs> <laughs> I think our libraries would look very similar actually, yeah. which is yeah. naturally, naturally why we're talking as well, because uh, we resonate, we, we get each other. So I'm, I'm curious, um, I'm in the middle of reading a book right now called Explorers of the Infinite, which is all about the, the spiritual lives of, of extreme athletes and the experiences that, that people have when they're right at the edge, you know, when they're wingsuiting 200 miles an hour past three inches past the rock face. And, um, and the race across America actually is mentioned in the book. Um, and I just, I, I wonder if there's anything that you can talk about in your experience of connection to something else when you're doing these big events. Yeah, I, I'm going, I, I, I've done a few Ironman in my time, which as you know, is a triathlon. It's about 2.4 mile swim, followed by a 112 mile bike ride and then finishing off with a marathon. So it's quite, it's quite an endurance uh, sport in itself. And I, I would always make sure I trained without music or any distractions because I really wanted to feel my body. I wanted to feel my surroundings and I wanted to hear what was happening. And it was one of my last training uh, rides. So it was in uh, April, which is winter or autumn in Australia because that's where I was living at the time. And I cycled for six and a half hours I was so cold, I couldn't undo my shoes. So my friend Lydia took me off the bicycle and did my, um, my bicycle shoes. And I started to get dressed to go running, which to my friends sounded insane because I, I could barely do my shoes up, let alone go running. But I, I had you know half marathon training run to do. And it was in the pitch of, pitch of black. Um, 
the only flat land I had where I lived was actually on the railway track. So I used to wear a head torch running along the gravel railway tracks. And as soon as I saw a train coming, I'd hide in a bush and turn my light off because it was also kind of borderline illegal what I was doing. But that's all I, that's the only place I could train for my flat runs. And so I was running in this, this dark light. All I had was the silhouette of my shadow in front of me that I was running towards, partly stumbling as well because I was so cold, I was slightly dizzy in my, in my eyesight as well. And behind me, I started to see a brighter light behind me, but it wasn't a train. And people in the village had come out to join me on the bicycles and shone the light in front of me. And it was in that moment that I, again, just burst into tears because I realized that the entire life is just a big circle. At the beginning, when I started to run, my village of 2000 laughed at me. I was this little Welsh girl saying I was going to become number one in the world and they, they could, I could barely run, as I said, a mile. So, but over time, they saw the effort every day I'd turn up and six, eight months later, they started to believe in me. So because I never put my light out, when my light was dimming, they came out with their own literal lights to shine it on my path so I could get home. And that is what I think drove me to, to win the next race, which was World Championships, because I knew my light had sh shone enough on the path that they were shining it for me as well. That is beautiful. And that is my greatest desire as we embark on this project is that our stepping out into our greatness, into our genius and creating a new conversation in the world will inspire other people to, um, and I have felt that too, the people who laughed at me, who opposed me, um, are now going, like, of course these things are happening. Mm. Mm. It's and beautiful. They see, they see that devotion. Yeah, and what's wonderful is you aren't passing the baton to anyone, you're holding on to yours and helping others like theirs. There's more than enough to go around. It's, we don't live in scarcity anymore. This is abundance. This is infinite possibilities. And we're embracing it. It's and wonderful. That, that story touched something really deep in me. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. So Thank you. Yeah. It's such a, I, I'm there on the tracks and I can feel how that feels for you to realize mm. that the town is with you. Yeah, and we forget, we, we don't think people watch. We don't think, we're told no one cares. We're told, you know, just do what you want. No one's gonna notice. We do, mm. we, we see when friends stop to help strangers. We see people stepping up and away from their excuses into their greatness. We see it all, we feel it all. And, you know, it's about time we all started to own and be responsible in every minute of our lives because we are creating ripples every second we're awake. So I just love seeing these ripples from others because I can feel the impacts and it's the ones that pick me up when I'm down. I couldn't agree more. Mm. I love what you said about I'm, I'm holding my baton and I'm using it to light other people holding theirs. We talk about, um, we talk about an infinite pie. Right? There's so much talk of competition of, you know, I need to protect my assets, my, in, my intellectual property, my, my this, my that. And it, it feels connected to me because if I am using my gifts to uh, and in fact, I was having a conversation with someone on Facebook about this literally the other day. She posted in a, in a group that I'm part of that she wants to launch her course and but she doesn't know how much content to put in the course because she's worried that people are going to take it and, and do stuff with it. And what should I do? And I'm really worried and I'm really scared. And my response to her was give it all away. All of it. Because yes, some people might take your material and pass it on, but they're gonna pass it on saying, you need to speak to this person because she knows, like I can give you the information, but she has the, the experience. And, and that brings us into this confluence, this like magical point 
where we learn these things when we go on adventures and through spirituality and we bring them back into our business and that's how we enrich humanity that's how we make the world a better place for everyone to live in yeah very very apt and do you know what if if you were, if we three sat down and wrote one script and all three of us said it identically we'd still have a tribe big enough to satisfy our needs we'd still meet meet our kpis we'd still get our positive return on investment or whatever we want to measure it doesn't matter because your your way is so unique and so is mine we create the tribe that resonates with our voice so it really doesn't matter even if we steal it using the words loosely yeah yeah i can eat as much of your pie as i can get my hands on and you still have a full pie there's yeah. a shaman that i love listening to and he has um he has a brilliant three-part youtube video uh called grief and praise and i his name eludes me at the moment but in the introduction to his to this one hour talk that he gives he says at the in the intro you know he talks about this exactly where people are are fighting for a piece of the pie and he's like there's enough trauma in this room right here to keep me working for a thousand lifetimes i don't need to be competing for a slice of the pie there's more pie in this room here than i can i can serve in one lifetime yeah. and that's just in an auditorium and let's say even if it was a stadium and held a hundred thousand people out of the you know over six billion people on the planet if that small room can you know if there's enough work there for one healer for a thousand lifetimes <clears throat> there's lots of pie yeah 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 and just like a glass of water, even if it runs out, it's refillable. We it can is. make a pie, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and you know, like you said, if someone takes the conversation that we're engineering about this convergence, um, it doesn't weaken our position. It means that there's more people having that conversation, which means that more people are going to find us. Yeah. Right? Someone else is breaking ground for us, with us. And some of the people will be better served by us. Some will be better served by them. The point is the transformation. Totally. Yeah. It's such, it's such a healthy way to be. And mm. you know, I, I call it the get mentality. There are people who just focus on what you're getting or what they can get from everything. But we feel it. Even if, mm. uh, even if we're not empaths per se, or it's a new phenomenon of, you know, trusting our guts and it doesn't logically make sense. We can sense rooms or people we want to continue to do business with. Yeah. So the abundance mindset will always be rewarded because people love, they're more drawn to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a great way to be in business as well. Yeah. It, um, I just need a second because something fired about something that you said earlier. I may or may not pick it up in this moment. I don't think it's going to come to me. If it does, we can pick it up later. Um, sure. Yeah. So let's um, let's talk about your what you're doing in January for a bit because it's quite inspiring. Mm. Why don't you you tell us in your words? Well, it started off as one world record attempt which is the furthest distance on a static bicycle in 24 hours. And it has grown to three. So the first hour will be to break the world record for the furthest distance in one hour, then the furthest distance in 12 hours, and subsequently the, the biggie, which is 24 hours. And uh, I suppose the reason I chose it is because there is no, there's a male equivalent for those three world records but there is no female for the 24 hour records. And uh, this was a few years ago, I, I noticed this disparity and it, it, it does get me questioning that we, we see these buzzwords floating around a lot, like the word resilience, the word equality, the word you know, diversity and inclusion are very popular at the moment. Yet we need to start actually taking action behind those words to make sure that we are displaying equality, we are displaying diversity and inclusion and we're living a resilient life uh, so in all honesty looking at my business i knew i needed a challenge to 
to step up and keep me in that fear out of my comfort zone because that's what I tell my clients to do and it would be hypocrit hypocritical of myself if I didn't challenge myself but I also wanted to open up the deeper conversation of you know when we look at our role models who are portrayed on our televisions our social media inadvertently on bus stops as well even if we're not inviting them necessarily into our lives do we see the entire world reflected in those people or is it a select elite few that that seem to get ex, extra coverage and as a as a woman i noticed there are a, a lot more men being represented yet i also noticed i'm being represented it unequally as well because i am white and because i come from a social so, certain socioeconomic background as well so this journey isn't just about the physical of pushing myself it's also a deeper conversation to say to society and to give other people permission, we need to see more representation in these leaders, in our pioneers, in the people that we strive to be like, so, so that the world will display, not just with words and hashtags and the usual trends, but with actual action, some, some real diversity, some real inclusion. And so that, that platform that I'm using is my sport to, with intent, start these conversations with businesses, not just the nice little girl on a bicycle that I think some people think that I'm turning up just to be. It's amazing to have such a powerful why driving what you're doing. Thank you. So what's the best result for you? Let's assume you smash all the world records because you will. I get the feeling that's not actually the point from what you what you said. So what, what is the ultimate outcome that you desire from taking part in this? Oh gosh, I've got tingles when you've asked me that question. Um, the best outcome is every family starts to have a conversation to say, where, um, where are my unconscious biases happening? How am I favoring men over women, whites over blacks? How am I actually feeding the divide of the rich poor? What is my role within this? And what steps can I take to start leveling the playing field with truth, not this tick box society that we see in some businesses? I really want everyone to start opening up that conversation because I don't know the answer. I barely know the question. I need everyone to start having these conversations so that we can all collectively evolve away from this into a new state of being and operating because we can't fix it from this current mindset. We're just far too fixated on the hows, we're far too fixated on the small details, but those are just the flags. We need to dig deep into those roots and some of those roots aren't mine to dig out, but I can hold, again, hold the space for the people to do the work so the roots can be removed. Yeah, yeah. I grew up um, visiting my grandparents' farm on the weekends. And one of the things, the farm is where I realized I got introduced to adventure. Um, crawling around on the hay bales and swinging on the ropes and climbing the ladders and milking the cows and, you know, watching the shit fluff flow down the gutter into the manure pit and out onto the spreader and onto the field and riding the combines and the tractors. And, and that's really, that was my introduction to adventure was growing up on my grandparents' farm. And um, and I lost the plot again. Um, what were you saying? Um, roots, digging out roots. Right, so um, one of the things that happened on the farm was that my grandma, we would, we would play in the garden and you know we'd steal the peas so we also got to weed the garden <laughs> right um but but maybe because we helped her in the garden she didn't shame us when we stole the carrots and the peas because nothing tastes better than carrots that have come straight from the garden with a bit of dirt on them still or mm. peas or corn right off the stalk it's just the best thing ever and and so recently this idea of weeding has really um has really come alive for me and we live in a world where 
where right and wrong, right? Where the, the knives are with the forks and, you know, the cap isn't on the toothpaste and your right wing or left wing or whatever it is. And, and what connected for me is, is that these, these things, this right and wrong, it's all symptomatic. And, and there's this, there's this distortion that exists, this like root and we just keep cutting it off at the stock when we talk about these things of right and wrong and it just mm -hmm. keeps growing back. And when you talk about rooting it out, it's like the idea that's really landing for me now is we need to get real. We need to stop living in a world of right and wrong and we need to get to the root and be a genuine, vulnerable, fully realized human being and say, this is where my soul is. This is, and when we're having a conversation about right and wrong, there's something, there's a root for me and a root for you. And those two things, like before we ever met, before we ever started having a conversation about who's right and who's wrong, our ancestors preloaded this conversation. So that when we met, it didn't, it wasn't a matter of who fired the first shot, it was an issue of like this conversation already existed before we even laid eyes on each other. And when we look at it from that perspective, then it's an opportunity for us to go to our roots and pull out the root. And when, and what my grandma taught me was that when we leave the root behind, even if it's just a part of the root, the wheat grows back. And, and that simple teaching that she laid on me as a child has come back full circle into yeah. this personal growth work. And I'm now looking for where, where are those roots and, you know, what are the tools to loosen up the dirt and like, and work it out, work it out. And some, like some weeds, you give them a little tug and the whole root system comes out and it's this long and other weeds, they have like a little root like this, but like, if you don't work it out properly, it doesn't come out at all. It just holds stubbornly into the soil and, yeah. and our, our beliefs, our patterns, our traumas, our ancestral stuff is, is so much like that. And, and so that's, that was the link for me. Yeah, it's very true. And I'm just curious, what, do you guys have a certain, when something happens, you know that uh, one of your root, you, you need to start digging and finding out what that trigger point is? Do you have any sort of symbols or something that happens within you that you know that that's a sign to do some work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what I'm learning to do is I'm look well, I'm like, I'm very much within this last year learning to do that. And, and the thing that I've learned in the last couple of weeks that's really powerful is that, um, you know, as children, we had the desire to be loved infinitely 24 seven on demand exactly the way we wanted. And by the time we realized that that wasn't possible, I don't think we could even verbalize that. And so then we switched the terrible twos. We switched to try and control our entire environment. And then we realized we can't do that. So we strive to be perfect and we strive to be perfect so that we can have that like omnipotent rulership of our environment that we failed to get initially as children, as tiny humans. And what that does is it sets up a belief system where if I was perfect, I could have all of the love that I wanted. That's the internal judgment. And if you did everything exactly the way I wanted it to be done, then I could, then I could also be loved. And, and we, we create these because it then becomes a shameful thing to admit that we're not loved because of this belief system that gets set up. We seek out substitutions for love, right? You need to follow me, obey me. Um, I need to prove to you that I understand. You need to prove to me that you understand all of these like needs, unmet needs. The, the root of that is actually simply the desire to be loved. And so I'm learning when I judge Tom that it's not actually Tom, it's my desire to be loved. And it's a distorted expression of the love that's coming, coming through. And the more often I can do that, like 
my emotional reactivity is decelerating but i'm yeah. not human i mean i'm human still unfortunately so the short version of that story is when you judge someone else you know it's time to do work on you exactly yeah 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 mine is anger when i express anger all that knee my knee jerk no nope. don't know what you're talking about yeah. i pull out my intellect cards i know more than you and i'm like oh i'm so sorry let me just do some work yeah yeah i've got that one as well yeah mm. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we are human and isn't that a beautiful thing it is yeah. perfect perfectly yeah. imperfect i'm still striving towards not being human in this physical incarnation <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, in the next life <laughs> maybe, maybe in the next yeah. life yeah, yeah. Or, or in this one please let me know if you you, you achieve that Mm -hmm. in, the meantime, I'll... The potential of your future. <laughs> in the meantime i'll go on an adventure <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you know adventure i think we look a lot at the external like you know mm -hmm. doing things but yeah. in a way in a, inner adventure is just as exciting it's Absolutely. just as dramatic yeah 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 totally so how do people get behind you support you contact you further your mission what do you what matter for people who are watching like what can they what can they do to, to support you uh, i would love to get get in touch with people please reach out to me send messages follow me uh i'll follow back so my name is kate strong my website is katestrong.co and i'm kate strong zero one on most social platforms so yeah, I, I do my best to share the truth rather than the, the picture perfect moments. So don't expect anything too grandiose from studios, expect reality. But I think that's the beauty of life is to, to sort of remove this veil of curtain. As you said, we don't have to be perfect all the time. It's about sharing the moments of weaknesses and yeah. reality to make sure we're giving other people permission to share. I think we've got enough of those uh, of those models and role models. We need some human people now. Yeah, and, and when is the big day? The Well, it starts at three UK time, 3 p.m. on the 7th of January, 2021. And I will be finishing at 3 p.m. on the 8th of January, 2021. Mm. And it, I believe you're gonna stream it live, like, is there anything that you can share about that or should people just kind of follow you for details? I would love to share details because it would mean I'd actually organize myself and I know what, what I'm doing. But uh, most probably it will be live streams on Facebook. If I can learn how to do other areas, then I will. And I'll also be doing some drop in webinars so people can actually dial in cycle with me or ask questions, if not myself, but my team, if I'm a little bit, you know, focused on the cycling bit. We'll also be doing moments where if people did want to get on their bikes, they can cycle along with me as well as just hearing me talk. Mm -hmm. And my physio will be doing post yoga stretches so you can learn how to, to release the physical and uh, uh, tension as well as getting into our emotional connectivities as well. So I'm, I'm intending it to be a festival of ourselves and the plan is at the end, I'd love to hear what everyone did with, the, with those 24 hours. You know, this is what I did. What did you do? Come along and share. So if as we went to what everyone else did. Sharing that, I just thought how brilliant it would be if your village crossed the finish line with you. <laughs> well, I'm on a static bike, so I'm not going anywhere fast. <laughs> oh, you're not going anywhere fast. Oh, so it's not, you're not like actually on the 24 hours, you're just on a static bike yeah 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 okay oh that's gonna be um that's gonna be a challenge in and of itself it's posing a lot of challenges because not to get too much details but if your leg spins 70 times a minute and you're not moving there's a lot of heat and friction generated so i'll leave yeah. that to your imagination but yes yeah. yeah, so it's also the mental there's no distraction and yeah it's uh yeah. it's a, just have a very there at, yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, it's quite exciting. Well, there'll be some deep inner work that happens during those twenty-four hours for you as well. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. just to stay awake for twenty-four hours. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And to eat 
I have 17 and a half thousand calories I'll be burning that I need to replace. So lots of cake. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Kate, thank you so much. Uh, this has been a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful conversation. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed it and I have no doubt that everybody tuning in has also. Um, is there anything uh, just as we as we kind of bring it to a close, is there anything final that you want to share um, to, to close us out? Just to aim to be the best of yourself. That's all we can ever be. It's not up to us what happens outside of that. I don't know if I'll get my records or or anything, but I know that I'll be doing my best every single day and that's all we can ever focus on. So focus on our inner self and the outside will reflect that accordingly, but that's not up to us. We can only focus on us. Well, thank you very much, Kate. And thank you everybody for tuning in. This has been the Adventure Effect Live with Tom and Curtis. Please do subscribe, share, like, all of that good stuff. And um, we will see you uh, next week. Bye for now. And we're done. Yay, thank you. Um, that was beautiful. Oh, that was really powerful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you as well. Thank you for your contributions. And yes, yeah, yeah, I loved it. It was really enjoyable. Thank you. Yeah, and we would very much love to do it again in the aftermath of yeah. and and as a world record holder. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. <laughs> would you like to book that in now, or do you want to just freestyle it? Yeah, well, let's, so it's, did you say the 22nd of January? 7th. No, the 7th of January. It's not Why did I think it was 22nd? Weird. Well, that is my birthday, but in March. That so must be it. <laughs> just tapped into the knowledge. Okay, so you're doing it on Thursday through into Friday? Yes. So would the following Monday, the 11th, work for you? In theory, my partner and I were going on vacation that week, so I could do the week after the seventh, the week of the eighteenth. The eighteenth. Okay. Well. So, um, I'm starting a research paper in the effects of sport and extreme sport on women because we don't have enough of those papers. So I'm learning how to write scientific journals as well. Mm. Awesome. So yeah, which day would work better for you? Uh, Monday. Okay. Uh, eight fifteen until nine forty-five. Uh, guests, Kate Strong. On Zoom. You mentioned a book about adventurers, something infinite. The uh, explorers of the infinite. That's it. It is blowing my mind. I will put it on my Christmas list. Uh, have you read um, Chasing Fire or Stealing Fire? Yes. Stealing Fire. I have even got that on my bookshelf and you can borrow it if I want to. Really? Yeah. I yeah, I'd strongly recommend that. It sounded slightly similar, but along with a similar thing to what you've described to Explorers of the Internet. We had a, we had a call with uh, someone from the Flow Research Institute, which is Stephen Kotler's new project. And they're doing a pilot program to coach, to equip coaches with the tools to take their clients through flow state, being in the moment, peak performance, all of the stuff that he talks about. And so that's on one of, that's one of the many items on our Christmas wish list. Um, because that's completely what he's talking about is completely in alignment with the brand that we're creating and to be able to bring those tools into coaching during COVID is the best way I can think of yeah. to integrate adventure into life, into life right now and possibly for the, you know, we'll see about, I think we've got another year of this to go. I know, right? <laughs> Which yeah. is probably why you're going for the record on a stationary bike. 
it, it was a part of it, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Control over your environment. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, um, well, it, it's interesting because I don't know what's happening in Canada, but in Britain, everyone, everyone, a lot of people, mainstream media believers are, oh, yay, we're going to get a vaccine and everything will be fine. And there's no question about any side effects or what's in the vaccine or, well, you know, control. The polio vaccine was introduced in 1976 or something and wasn't eliminated until 2002 or something like that. Mm -hmm. This is this idea that the vaccine is the end of the problem. And no question about why nutrition isn't being addressed yeah. or at, like people aren't being told about nutrition, exercise, mindset, meditation, like all of the, the oh, front, the front line, like the um, proactive yeah. solutions rather than reactive solutions. And why is yeah. that? Because proactive solutions you cannot make money from. No. No, because they want you, well, not dead, but not too healthy. Just that state of one sneeze yeah, away from... Towards the bottom of that scale, mm -hmm. is ideal. Yeah, yeah because yeah. then people think like you and they inspire others to action. Mm. Yeah. What's interesting is, because I'm plant-based as well, mm -hmm. there's been even... I, I did a talk for a major bank and, uh, and even people there were like, you're plant-based? What? Why are you doing this? So it's wonderful because people are now getting curious about the other aspects of just being on the bike. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I want is just to open up those conversations. So. Yeah. Are you familiar with Tim Sheaf? <sighs> I know the name. He's, oh, a, um, he's a free running world champion. Who's also vegan. Yeah. He's a, he's a cool guy. Um, Isn't he doing a lot with water at the moment? I think. Yeah. He, he, he seems to be going more and more, kind of barefoot hippie with every day that goes <laughs> that goes past. I know, like, I genuinely think he doesn't wear shoes right now. And power to him. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's a, a, another shining example of, of, of you know, plant-based athlete at the absolute top of their game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I, I think it's great when it's no by the way part of the story as well rather than you know i'm a vegan and i do this yeah so, but yeah of course i am you know it's not it's not it's not the headline but you know mm -hmm. it'd be silly not to even consider it yeah joe so, rogan does a great bit about vegans how like it's not vegans that he doesn't like it's the vegans who like are holding their breath when they meet you to get it out and it's yeah. like and and the, just the way he says it is, is hilarious because he's like, he exaggerates it, of course, right? Because it's a comedy bit. And he's like, <gasps> I'm vegan. And he's like, oh, that only took 15 seconds for you to get that out. I just barely met you and you're already telling me you're a vegan. I'm like, great. And he's like, those are the vegans that he has a problem with. But the yeah. vegans were just like normal about it. And you like go to a restaurant with them and all of a sudden you find out they're vegan. It's mm -hmm. like, great. You're doing this in a way that is like, but there's something there when I, like, I don't know. I can't remember if it was Joe Rogan or if it was someone else. But there's the joke: if a vegan does CrossFit, which one do they tell you about first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry. yeah. I admire people that can go plant-based. I've tried several times, and I have to go back to meat. It's something that I have to accept as part of my diet: high fat, high protein animal-based nutrition is something that my body seems to require at this time. When I can figure out how to go plant-based, I will. But mm -hmm. it, it just, yeah. And yeah. My, biggest, my biggest irritation is when people who don't know my story meet me and they're vegan and I tell them that and they're like, well, you just weren't trying hard enough. And I'm like. The truth is it's not for everyone. No. Well, it wouldn't be needed, it is an element of, of denial and like I, I i i thrive off it obviously but we wouldn't need it if the world wasn't so extreme like we yeah. we need the the polarities because there are poles yeah. you know it, totally yeah. so totally. you know i would eat meat in if the world was not normal what i call normal 
and I wanted to eat something and I went out and caught it and and killed it and put it on the fire then I'd yeah. gladly yeah. eat it I'm not doing that in this lifestyle because I think there's more than enough dead animals out there already yeah so but that's a choice yeah so yeah, totally. yeah very much so. I love it I love hearing about athletes that are plant-based and challenging people's perceptions of what's possible because in every way people's perceptions need to be challenged mm -hmm. and like you said you're going to the bank and and doing a talk and if you weren't plant-based they wouldn't be interested in your diet but because you're plant-based it's anomalous and now you can have a conversation about like health about nutrition and immunity mm -hmm. that my diet wouldn't open up yeah and and they need to be like you know imagine they're going home going like Martha, Henry, did you know that nutrition affects our immunity? <laughs> and all of a sudden they're like paying attention to that conversation with their- and They're just more conscious. Yeah, they might not have been even aware of how much meat they ate or how much dairy they ate or how much meat they didn't eat. Yeah. But suddenly we've awakened that consciousness and that's yeah. pretty much what it sounds like what we're all doing. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's our intention with this conversation around adventure, spirituality, and and business is that it's a platform that allows us to have a conversation, you know, that is fun and interesting for people, but also we plan to take them deeper than they've ever gone in their lives before on the inner, on the inner path. And, yeah. you know, it's just, if we can get a group of people out for a, an adventure for a week or 10 days or some sort of expedition, and they're they're paying a premium to be part of our our group. Well, if, if we're in a if we're in a fleet of four by fours crossing Antarctica on something that is fairly routine for them, but an extreme adventure for us, um, they're going to panic at some point. They're going to be too close to their edge, and they're going to have a breakdown. And when they do, for us to sit around the fire sing Kumbaya. And I didn't know that was part of the plan. Is that what you do? <laughs> your IP that you've been protecting. <laughs> it's just part of my like Kumbaya it's, was a part of the business plan I was not told about. It's part of my <laughs> it's part of my growing up. Like it it's there's a, a codex there. But when we're sitting around the top, the campfire connecting, then you know <coughs> what happened for you today? And everybody wants to talk about whatever that moment was where they felt like everything was going sideways and it was completely out of control and we were totally in the hands of our guides everything was going as planned but they just all of a sudden the enormity of what they were doing collapsed on them and they had a moment mm -hmm. right and what happened well in that moment like how many years of coaching would it take to get to that level of vulnerability and with that community around them like that bondedness how long would it take to create that through a group coaching program? Yeah. It take years. And so you can just go straight down and just like, and like we were talking about, like, okay, well, this is what you're feeling. Where else in your life have you felt like that? Where does the memory from childhood that matches this? What's the lesson from that? Tell your inner child the truth of that, blah, blah, blah. And and like, okay, so now what are you creating as a result of understanding this moving forward? How does your life change? What is happens next year, five years, 10 years? And all of a sudden you've done this like massive. Unraveling. Mm, yeah. Or awakening. Yeah. 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 And how many times can you do that with one person in a week or 10 days? Mm. Well, imagine 3000 miles across America on a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> okay, we have to jump on to our, our next thing. Um, thank you so much. Um, thank you. It's been a real pleasure getting to know you and we look forward to um, speaking again in January. Um, yep. And we'll send you over a booking link. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, I really yeah. appreciate that.